So you're now to look to February 27, 2014. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology Unite, Day number 5, in week number 3. So let's get started. Welcome back. Uh, as I promised, I'm going to make sure that you know what is expected of you by the end of next week, which is March 8th. That means the time when you have to submit what you need to do in ready contract number one. So may I inform you by giving you the information first. In order to know what to submit, you need to come back to week number one, click the link submissions, and then you can see them on March the 8th, week number four. Again, you will expect to submit the artifacts for learning contract number one. So when you come to the artifacts for learning contract number one, Let's go through it briefly. Each one of you, each one of you is expected to submit one week's journal out of four different weeks. So if you are conscientious enough, you should by the end of next week finish journal for week number one, journal for week number two, journal for week number three, and journal for week number four. But out of the four journal, you just have to submit one. In other words, if you have not done any journal in the past four weeks by the end of next week, make sure you need to get one week's journal done and submit it, okay? Now, what is required when you submit a journal? Let's go to week number one. In week number one, this is week number one's reading, okay? If you come to week number one's reading, you see that we basically have two questions, okay? In other words, when you have to do the journal, you should have done something about these two questions, all right? So you see that underneath each question, I have a number of items here for you to do your investigation, okay? The same for this, but what is expected of you is in your journal, you must have studied each one of these two questions by selecting at least one item underneath each question. Okay? Selecting at least one item underneath each question. So, in other words, if I would like to do a journal for week number one, I know that I must complete the journal by discovering enough of the information for this question, enough of the information for this question. And the source of my discovery could be any one of these or any one of these, or more than one item and the each one. It's really up to you, but at least one, okay? So what are you expect to do in each journal? You are required or expected or obliged to discover enough of the information under the item of the choice which is related to your understanding of the topic expressed by the question. Okay? Okay? So, to be more specific, if you want to know what is entailed in the format of each particular journal. So let's come back to our core service. Let's go to online activities because journaling is an online activity. And so basically, you need to do the journals in such a way that we expect that you have to practice the way of inquiry-based learning. Okay, inquiry-based learning is not something you use it and you forget. Inquiry-based learning is the foundation method or skills you need to acquire throughout this semester, starting from the first learning contract, which we consider as the beginning stage of inquiry-based learning. So when you write the journal, once you have already select the item of interest underneath each of the question, for that specific item, you need to discover, or in the traditional sense, make notes out of that item which is related to the context of the question. And the first step in making notes is 
for observation. You extract, extract from the piece of reading that you have selected and write down in a bullet list on the world, on one, on two, on three, on four, the information which captures your attention and which is very much related to the answer of the question. So we say that the first step we call discovery based on observation is to discover informational material from the topic you choose. Sometimes the topic could be a reading of an article. Sometimes, beside reading of the article, you might discover, and you definitely would discover, a lot of the video grids that I already provide, which is related to the topic. So another source is beside the selected reading item, you might want to watch a video grid already provided online, or listening to a speech, again, is provided online, in week in tweets, particularly to the environment. Okay? So the first observation is basically in a bullet list format. Alright? And then you extract it from that particular item and put it there as your discovered information. The second important thing based on your IBL, inquiry-based learning through discovery, is what we call the I stage, the interpretation stage. Here, the most important thing is you need to put together what you have put over there in the observation and try to ask some essential questions of what does these mean, okay? And when you ask what does each one of these data items you put together mean, you are trying to analyze the relationship between them, okay? And you're trying to find some connection from one item to the other item, and in a sense, which will help you to increase your understanding of the question, which is your guiding question, okay? So, we suggest when you come to interpretation, you try to use complete sentence to express what you have discovered. A complete sentence. And then, followed by at least one question. Again, the question asks for why is this related? Okay? Normally, you have a lot of questions to ask. So we say the second step, called I step, interpretation, is responsible for analyzing the information discovered from the topic that you select, and actually those information, you have already put some of the major chunks there in your observation step. It requires discovery of further, the word further is very important, information from other sources. And here is a very interesting trick. Although I say you need to start with at least one item, and when you try to do the interpretation step, normally you might and you have to, but 99% of the time in the past, they need to look at some other sources, okay, related to these questions. These sources could be directly taken out from those items, those other items that I provided on the UMODO side, or you can provide some of your own discovery through some Google search online. It's very really up to you, but as I said, at least three are relevant sources. In other words, when you try to put together something, although it's not completed yet, you are encouraged to look at other sources to see if you can put together some kind of personal perspective based on previewing into other sources how they are related related to the item, related to the topic you select, and put those information into perspective. Means you can try to tell a consistent story about what this means to you, okay? To help understand the issue, learning issue, questions involved in the topic. In other words, you need to nail down the issues related to your topic, and such topic could become some of the very good questions you can ask of yourself 
in your next episodes of learning. So when you have this done, you have transformed your raw information from some captured data from your source into something which you are actually making sense of and try to become your personal knowledge. In order to make sure that this will become your personal knowledge, you have to come to the last stage of the note-taking of journaling, which is called application. Application is basically um, a reflective process. You ask yourself, now I've already gone through the analysis based on the data capture, and I seem to be able to tell a story about what I can understand about the question at the very beginning. Now, can I try to really put them together, extract some lessons, learn from what I did, and I can share with any other body, in particular my learning partner. So, lessons learned based on some refractive feedback of your own is what you need to do here. Refractive feedback on all the items you discover, the analysis you have done, the inquiry, the very beginning, the question to start with, what you can do now to tell a much more coherent story, which is soft, relevant, but important for you to make people understand how important your discoveries are. And so, when other readers' story, they could benefit from your effort to discover something for them, your effort to tell the story, and your understanding of the issue. It represents some useful tips we can actually give to our people. So if I asked you, what have you learned about information security? A lot. Can you give me an example? Sure. What? Email security. What? Never use a simple password. Why? Because if you use a password like one, two, three, four, five, six, anybody can check things like this at the very beginning, and you are doing a disservice on your own. So what should I do? Use a password which is a little bit more sophisticated. In what sense? Well, a combination of letter and digit plus some kind of punctuation mark. Why? Because they make it difficult for people to duplicate it. Well, that's what's good. Okay, so where can I get some more information about this? Or go to this website. So this will basically give you a journal. And then since I already told you, you need to name your topic by copying the question of that with at the very beginning, the selected item, with including the link directly, and then you need to come to the references at the end. What three other relevant sources have to look into to help you to come to your conclusions? So you need to include name at the very beginning, your observations in terms of bullet list of discovery, interpretations in terms of individual sentences as a question, and applications, soft paragraph of your coherent story. Okay, name it, paragraph one, two, three, four. And then at the end, the references. And that could be considered as a good and relevant journal. That means you really did something with the topic to select. And how much time do you need to do one journal like this? When you look at my time management, I say um, at the very beginning for week number one to number four, for each week when you do a journal, you spend not more than one hour. How do I spend not more than one hour to do that? Well, I very much recommend my student to divide one hour into at least um, 10 six minutes long, okay? So you have 10 six minutes long to do the journal. You can try to do it, and you must practice it so you can succeed. The first six minutes when you spend it is you select an item from the questions. You start from reading the question, and then you go through the items under each question, and then at the end of the six minutes, you should be able to select one item for each question. Okay? Then you mark down on your personal sketchbook, or even you can do it online, the first six minutes, I spend reading the two questions. I spend selecting an item. 
Okay, and the second six minutes concentrate on one question. Study that item you select under that question. Just study it. And then whatever that comes out of your mind based on your reading, capture, copy and paste directly from the item into your journal. Okay? And then for the other six minutes, you do it for the other question. That means at the end of the first three six minutes not, you should have captured enough information to make up your observations for each question. And then when you come to the fourth six minute, it's your time to concentrate again on one question, moving to the stage of I. Okay? And then the fifth six minute, the same I for the other question, if you have two questions, okay? So at the end of the first five, six minutes now, you should have got done for each of two questions, the O and I, and you reserve another two, six minutes now to do the A. Okay? Then you will finish up to seven, six minutes now. And what you left is three more now for you to do extra refreshments. Okay? If you can manage to do six minutes work one at a time, to focus on the steps of doing it, that that is how you get one journal done per week. Now what if you have more than two questions, then you need to budget your time. Normally, you need to do less time in your selections and more time in your applications and analysis. That means the I. Now, these means you need to do it with care because time when it is used, it is used. So you must have a budget of your time when you do your journal. You don't study it in such a way that you tend to memorize everything. A lot of the observations that I've already done for my first and second year student is that normally when they believe they learn something in the secondary school, they tend to memorize it. They don't tend to understand. But in this class and in college study, we do not encourage any memorizations. We encourage that you are a processor of information. You know how to do with the information to extract what you need. And when writing a journal, in this case, it's how you can make the best use of your processor to extract enough the information. And remember, the purpose of getting a journal done is what? Do you remember? Okay, let me remind you. The purpose of getting a journal done is because you need to get ready for the second item that you need to submit. That is the item called One Complete Online Discussion Forum Reporting the Exchange Details through our week two, week three, and week four. And in this particular class, it actually is throughout week three and week four, because only this week, you got the learning partner, and next week, you also have the learning partner, so you can forget about week two. What does it mean? You, each one of you, is now given, or better as they have chosen, your learning partner. And one of the important tasks you need to do with your learning partner is to engage your learning partner to discuss one topic of interest. Okay, one topic of interest based on your journal detail in week number one, in week number two, in week number three, in week or in week number four. For example, in week number one, we have two questions. If you have select one, have to select one topic to discuss with your learning partner. It could be the topic based on the first question or the second question. Okay? If it is from week number one. Now, if it is from week number two, you look at how many questions are there in week number two. If there are three questions, you may just select one question that is called one topic. Okay? But what, when you have already selected one question or one topic, you need to provide your learning partner your journal information before he or she can start doing the discussions with you, right? And that is the purpose of the journal. 
When you try to engage your learning partner with discuss with you your topic of interest, you must get ready your journal for the reference of your learning partner so that he or she could give you feedback based on the O, based on the I, and based on the A of your journal. Do you, read, do you understand what I mean? Okay? In other words, if your learning partner needs your feedback to discuss with him or her the topic he or she chose, your learning partner must also provide the journal material of his or her interest topic in the form of the O, the I, and the A. Okay? And then when you have to submit this discussion forum detail. It is the discussion forum detail your learning partner helped you to discuss your topic. Do you see the meaning of that? Okay? Yes. 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 It's already there. No, we do not need to uh, copy. It's already there. In a minute, I'm going to show it to you. Right. And actually, I can do it now because it's already there. When you come to the websites here, okay, when you come to week number three, all right, do you see that there is something called pair online discussion forum here for week number three and four? All right, can you see that? Go to week number three. At the very end of week number three, tools to track the learning. Do you see that? Okay, when you click on this, since this pair discussion forum is tailored for each pair of this class, you can only see and use the pair discussion forum that belong to your pair. Uh, you now have a pair identity, you know which pair you belong to. For me as a teacher, I can see all of these, okay? But you can only see your pairs. And in that pairs, pair discussion forum, only you and your partner can come on this discussion forum. And the way to do it is very simple, you can start doing it. When you have your topic, because only two persons prepare, you say add the discussion topic, okay? And then you can see my topic, my topic, your name, my topic, okay? And then you can post your OIA here by copy and paste from your journal, all right? From your journal. And then once your pair partner had seen you post something here, the way your pair partner has to respond to it is very simple. Let me try one example. Uh, let me see if I can do something like this. What's your pair number? Okay, anyway, I go to pair number seven. Now I add the topic. So let me say this is teacher's topic. Now, and then I pose here. posting my observations and then I continue to post my interpretations okay you can see that to type in uh, something like uh, applications. So at the end of that, I'm going to ask my learning partner 
say it was done in Calvin? What do you think? As soon as possible. So in the end of that, I say pose to the forum. So in your, you're just going in your band number seven. So then you can see a topic like this in the discussion forum. And you open this. And if I'm your learning partner, in order to to give you some feedback, I just need to say reply. And then I can type. Okay. So do you know how to use this? That's the basic, right? Okay, I think you can follow me, but this is very simple, right? So, what, when I say you need to submit discussion forum details, that is very simple. Actually, at the end of your discussion, your forum detail is kept here. I can always come here to do uh, my reading of it. But in order to make sure you learn how to submit something online, you are also required to copy and paste your discussion detail at the end of the discussions to a Microsoft Word document and then you can write down in the Microsoft Word document your name and you submit it through the submission link. Okay? The submission link will be made available starting uh, the end of next week. Okay? So, so you understand at this point the purpose of getting your journal done besides your personal understanding of the topic is to make sure that you have something to offer to your learning partner to start the discussion. Okay? So I think I'm going to stop here first. So out the four items, actually maybe five, you need to submit in the learning contract number one is first, one journal of your own, selected from the four journal you were supposed to finish by the end of next week. Okay? And the format of the journal is just an OIA. And then is the discussion forum, which covers the discussions of your chosen topic with the help of your learning partner in week number one, two, three, or four. You just select one topic. By one topic, that means one question. Okay? One question. Yes. Just, uh, if you select your question for week number one, okay, and suppose if there are two questions in week number one, out of the two, you just need to select one. If you want to select your question or topic for week number three, and if there are four questions in week number three, you also are obliged to select only one question, okay? But when you do the journal, you have to do four for week number three. Because over there there are four questions. But when you offer to your uh, to your learning partner to discuss with you, you just need to select one question. Okay? No matter how many questions there are in that week or how many questions all together there are in four weeks. Only one question. Don't burden your learning partner. One will be good enough. Okay? We do not cherish a lot. We want one that's good enough. But when you do your journal, you must be responsible for doing all the questions. Okay? That is the basis of the training, your learning ability. Alright? So I think now I've given you two important artifacts you need to keep in mind when you submit your learning content number one. So when we come back next week, I will give you another two. Actually, the other two are here too, but I will. Spend time in class to make sure you understand it. Okay? So if you look at things like this, we still have one report, one refractive block, and some other things. Okay? But they are not new. Once you've done your discussions with your learning partner, you are already 50% completed. Okay? It's very important that you know this process. Okay, let's get back to our class today. This is week number three, and today is day number four. Now, I want you to spend three minutes per table, okay? 
We would like to discuss with you the meaning of digital divide, okay? And on Monday, we attend the idea of ethics and uh, corporate social responsibility. Now, in order to understand the meaning of digital divide, I want you to go back in your table, three minutes of day. Think about what is meant by the information age first, okay? Please go ahead, talk about yourself. The meaning of information age. The meaning of the information age. Okay? Unfortunately, you're the only person. Where are your members? Okay. Okay, it's okay. Maybe you can join this table for discussions. Otherwise, you have no one talking with you, unfortunately. So what is meant by an information age? It will be a three minutes time, and we would like to make sure we get this topic on target today. Information age. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Take your time. Let me get you some paper first, in case you need it. Information age. Uh, well, if you're smart enough, 
actually you should have already watched the information age uh, video here. So let me see if I could kick off our discussions now by I hope you've already done three minutes of discussions. Let's go take a look at the information age.
uh, everybody's idea in your table. One, okay? What do you think that can characterize our defining the information age? Okay? So think about this. You have not more than five minutes time. And I'm going to walk around to see if you got your idea. And particularly speaking, if you got your idea already, uh, you can just raise your hand and start sharing. Remember, this is also part of your in-class participation. When you stand up and say anything, you can put it down in your notebook. I start with sharing something on a particular day that will also be covered towards the end of the semester when we give you the score of in-class participation. Okay? It is not just when you sign up and come to talk, it is when you participate in an in-class discussion. That is that is the kind of okay? So don't, don't lose this chance to tell us something. And I, I guess once you know that before people from that table would like to say something, because that is kind of things, right? So, what do you think that you can offer at something that could characterize your understanding of what an information age is all about? Okay? I hope to finish the discussions of the information age uh, before three twenty-five. So I'm going to pass the microphone in one minute. What do you think it's characterizing today's information age? We might want to give your definitions on information age. All about what is it in this information age you believe it's very much characteristic of it? In some video, you can see that a student may use quite a number of devices which he or she believes is the characteristics of the information age. Do you buy it? Is it all that is? Okay. What do you think? Something about your understanding of what is an information age? Uh, something similar to the video we had just watched a few minutes ago. Uh, something may, uh, I come up with is that uh, when during ancient times, uh, the generals and the emperor often have to send, you know, some good horses to running, running through the whole country, you know, just uh, to give a little bit of information nowadays it's it's better for national defense I could say but it also a little bit encouraged uh, the, the, the battle and then it come up with something like the online communications and online purchasing uh, you know we not like, unlike old days we go out to store and purchase whatever we saw but 
Nowadays, that we can we can browse through the web pages and see what are we really interested in. We have much more choices, but I would say sometimes we could lose money more easy because there's so many choices and so many things we might be interested in. And also, like he also come up with an idea that like the few class before we saw the the advent. Adventure, we the people who have their own image uh, on uh, online, and they can have another relationship with another person all over the world. I would say the the, the life now have huge changes uh, comparing to the ancient times because of the information age. Okay, I I thank you very much. You have uh, you have given us something very interesting. Um, and anything to add from the vow? Uh, your, your partner, table partner? I'm just going to support this point though. Yes. When it comes to um, business, uh, before people used to do uh, what's called the butter system, which means like uh, I would like to have a chicken and I want the pig, so I have to like walk somewhere to find somebody who wants what I have. So there's no need for that now. Like you said, you can just uh, go online. You eBay or we buy one train. So that it's very much characteristics of the information mm -hmm. data. Uh, and also nowadays it's more like uh, be before people used to seek for information. Uh, the, you look for the news, you look for newspapers, but how it is right now you wake up, it seems like information comes to you. I mean like Facebook, you just, it's like a news platform now. It's easy to get news nowadays. Okay, so that means the convenience yes. of information is coming to right to your front door, right? Yes. Okay, that's very good. So, uh, what about a lady in your table? Do you have anything to add? Yes. Do you want to add something? Yes. I think uh, maybe the development of the online game. On nine games, um, okay. At first, uh, we have the uh, 2D and then 3D, and even um, they are inventing the. Um, I don't know how to say this one. Okay, but um, I think you have given a very good example. For many of the young folks, playing on nine games is a fact of life, and to them, this is their distinguishing characteristic for an information age. Yes, very good. I, I thank you very much for your contributions here. Can you pass the microphone to the table next to you? Yes? Uh, do, you, do you have any ideas to share with us in terms of information age? Yes. We think that uh, the, the information age is very fast. Very fast? Okay. <laughs> It is a evolution. Evolution of what? <laughs> uh, of the technology. Oh, that's very good. Evolutions of the technology. You, you make a very good point. Such as, um, for example, gaming. Yeah. What? Uh, for example, the mobile phone. Yes, the mobile phone. It, yes, in the past we need to go home in order to use our fixed line phone in order to make a phone call. What about the basic example of the email? Remember Kenny suggested in the past we need to find someone to ride a horse to send a letter from place one to place B, but in case there is a C a cause it, you need to send it through a, a bowl and then followed by a horse riding. Today, emails goes everywhere. So what do you think? Any contributions from the table, the other three girls? Don't be shy, it's your time to earn points. You can always tell that on a particular day, day number five, I make a lot of contribution to past discussions. Um, yes. It's just like, uh, to use our camera to view something, but now we just need one, our mobile phone is enough. 
You can take photos, you can send email, you can uh, play online games, just one phone. Okay, that means yeah. one device for yeah. all of these. That's the evolutions of technology. I, I very much think so. Yes. yes. Thank you. So, any other things to add from the other member of the table? Do you have anything to add in the context of an information age? Uh, I think it's, uh, it makes our life become more convenient uh, because, uh, for example, the computer. Uh, we can't bring it outside in the past and we can bring the notebook to the school now. Okay, so you used the example of a notebook, but uh, any other example besides a notebook, from, perhaps from your uh, buddy student next to you? Yes? I think that... Uh, um, I need to shift the camera a little bit. In the past time, we we get we get the news by by the videos and just listen the the sounds to hear what's happened. And but after that, we have the t TV. TV. Yes, yeah. and we can see the image and see the situation. What what the work has happened and but and now suddenly we can use computer to watch the news and right. get the information immediately. What the world has happened. Okay, that's a very interesting example. I have a friend who is a journalist who is also an editor of news. Um, he, he told me that it is not that he's going against the technology, but from his point of view, news must be added and discovered and uh, checked it out before um, broadcast directly because if we broadcast directly, we're just transmitting information. We're not doing news. So uh, that is a very interesting phenomenon today because the speed of the transmissions of information and the professional expertise of doing news editing and create a story to report on the news, uh, the time is shorter much, much softer than one or two decades ago. So it requires much more uh, perfect um, uh, teamwork in order to produce an accurate news uh, so as to be convincing. And then it's very interesting. I thank you very much for using this example. So maybe you can pass the microphone to the other table. Yeah. Uh, could you share with us something from your table's perspective, information age, yes? I see that the video said that, that the, the technology device is improved very faster and faster. Yes, and yes. And I iPod and iPad and ebook. Okay. We now can store our uh, store our store the things we like, like books and music into into to the little, uh, little small, small device. Okay. So we can use them uh, whenever we like. Okay. So an e-book is an example of your experiencing of the information age. Okay. So what do, uh, what does your friend on the same table think about it? Do you have anything to add to us, Judy? Uh, Julian? Yes. I think. For example, uh, before we no. You can just give an example to characterize your understanding of the information age. Um, in the old days, uh, we call someone and we pick up our phone and. We all know there are many mobile phone readings. Okay. So when we have our earphone okay. um, and uh, um, uh, Bluetooth earphone, it's more convenient and good for our heads. Okay, I thank you very much. I, I could give you one typical example of our personal experience. In the past, we love to enjoy food, 
When there is good food put in front of the table, when friends gather together, we eat. Today, they don't eat it. They hold up their smartphone, let's make a photo and upload to Facebook first. Let my family and friends look at what I'm eating. Good! If they like it, I will say, good, like it again. So this is a typical example of information age phenomenon. So could you pass the microphone to the table next to you? Yes. Help yourself. Don't be shy. Thank you. Um, we, we think that uh, the, uh, ta the information age is uh, uh, make our life more uh, faster and okay. much more effective. Effective? Or? Yeah, and for example, uh, the, uh, the mobile phone, we don't need to use wire anymore. We just, and, and we can have our absolute stable uh, yes. signal, so uh, we will, uh, uh, the conversation won't be cut off because of the bad, bad signal. Okay, that's an evolution of technology. Yes, and, uh, and even uh, cell phones now, it's just not just uh, calling somebody, okay. uh, it's also that uh, we can test, uh, Text, uh, yes. yes, we can test people. And uh, so uh, we can receive more information from our friends. Okay. Yeah. That's make our life more effective. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, any feedback from the other two from your table? Uh, I think the online communication is one of the. Yes, online communication. Yes. Yes. It is one of the most important. So that means from your point of view, the, uh, the emergence of the apps, the mobile phone, the convenience of messages, others, keeping online communication, these are your personal experience of the information age. Yes. Okay, thank you. What about your partner over there? Do you have anything to add to our understanding? Um, actually, I think the information age is actually the Result of human desire because oh. uh, we want our life to be better. Okay. And we want more entertainment, so we make our technology more advanced. So okay. this is a kind of uh, innovation, and um, and I think um, for example, if you want uh, your online game to become more advanced, like three uh, D yes. and um, people have to uh, update the, uh, the computer screen, so I think they are kind of connected to each other. Okay, but I, I'm very much impressed by your <coughs> descriptions that the information age is the result of human desire. That was a very interesting statement, did you think about us? The information age is the result of human desire. Looks like we do have uh, something we want to get out of it. And information age happens to be uh, the collective uh, design of human being. Uh, behind it, a lot of efforts going in this direction. It, it's very interesting, this statement when you think about this. It's very interesting. Wow, it's, uh, maybe you can put more thoughts into it and share more. All right? Okay, can you pass the microphone to this table? Very nice table. It's a very interesting statement. It's, uh, don't you think that? Okay? Uh, I, I think that uh, information age is make the life more easier. Okay. And, uh, nowadays, we only need Google to search every information, but in old days, we need to go to a uh, library and follow a lot of books. So, 
Yes, I think that um, the information age uh, gives a lot of knowledge. Okay. And new technology and make our life easy. So this is my point. Okay. Uh, anything to add from your ladies' partners in the table? Hello. Uh, and for me, information age is like a revolution of new media. Okay. Yeah, because in, um, some girl has said that, that uh, in the past we need to send mail or telegram to communicate with uh, maybe our family or friends who are living in the other, uh, the other side of the world. So okay. now it's very convenient because we have email or sometimes we can also use webcam to see our uh, friends and relatives and I think this um, it can make us um, much closer. closer. Okay. Yeah. So anything more to add from the lady next to you, Lena? Okay, mostly it's better than before. Um, in the in digital, um, the information sound is better than before. Okay. Yeah.
aligned with what you have shared. Um, if you have a chance to look back on the video of today and take your sharing of what is meant by an information age, you see that we are enjoying the advantages of this information age. I guess all of you here are enjoying the advantages of this information age by the fact that most of you have access to the computer at home, uh, at school, or when you're walking around with your mobile devices, and you can easily get access to a lot of different kind of information, learning resources, information of your living necessity. But the message presented by this very soft digital divided video tells us not all the people in the world could enjoy the same. In those countries which they name here Africa, Asia, Middle East, so there's still many people who cannot enjoy this. For what reasons? We don't have the access to the technology. We don't have the basic financial means to install those privilege. So the, the question there is, what can we do to close the gap? And the examples given is a lot of the company, uh, the microelectronics company given here said, they have done something to try to provide the technology to different people in different regions in the world um, in the same set, make it affordable for them. Okay? And through doing that, which is also an example of what we call a corporate social responsibility, we talked about last week, not our last lecture, and the reasons why we need to have this kind of corporate social responsibility, the idea is very simple, common good. Ethics tells that there is no law which forces us to do something like this, and because we want to see an even much more justified, fair society, people who took initiative to do something. A closer example from Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a very wealthy region in the world, but investigations tell us that actually you heard this from different sources of news in Hong Kong. In the area of Samsui Pong, Samsui Pong, Chang Sama, is still not of the pre war housing, five to six story building. And inside those five to six story building, at the standard of today's living, we should say that no, we should not afford things like this, but still, the people living in those, what we call over apartment, divided into 20 or 30 living units with only two bathrooms shared by more than 20 people. And in each of these living units, they install their portable kitchen there. So they have a rice cooker, a water, or whatever it is. But the conditions of living is very, um, very deplorable. And we know that the kids living with their families there in an area no bigger than this part. And they don't even have enough to eat, so they can't afford to have a computer, nor even intellect access. Now, there is a small percentage of people in Hong Kong still living there, below 10%. But what can we do to do it, uh, to help improve that? Well, I, I did some investigations on that, and I, I follow up with some stories presented by my friends. In Hong Kong, um, there is something good done by some non-profit making organizations. One example is what we call the Web Organic. Web Organic. Very interesting name. The, the people behind the Web Organic said, we still have kids whose family cannot afford a computer, internet access, because of what? They don't even have enough to eat every day. But they're going to school, okay? They don't have uh, internet access, they don't have computer, that means they cannot see the whole world through the internet. So what they're thinking of is they're trying, and actually they did a project with the help support of the government, they're trying to provide to each such family uh, a decent computer, a notebook computer, iPad, whatever it is, with internet access for a combined cost per month of less than 100 Hong Kong dollars for the family. 
and then love the family, join the program. Okay? For the goodness of the kid, because once they have a chance to go online through the computing device, through the internet access, the kids will have the opportunity to see the world through the internet access. And they can improve themselves. Today, you actually don't need to come back to school to learn what is called subject-based knowledge. In the internet today, you can go to the free course website like Coursera, provided free of charge for anybody who wants to learn something. You can finish your whole education in university by doing courses like this. Of course, there is no paper to certify that you did it. Here, you have a credential. Through at web, you don't. They just have the knowledge made available. So this is an example of how people during the digital divide. Now I do not know if we have something, some homework like this in the car, but at least we do not have research coming up yet to tell us which family needs this help in the car. Okay? So that is one example. Now before I close today's class, I want to give you the second video, which is only three minutes. A one minute and fifty-five seconds. The digital divide means that there are a significant number of people across the country, especially in my local community, who not only don't have access to technology, to the internet and computers, but they don't have the skills to be able to use them effectively. Today, only about half of all Americans are connected to high-speed internet. And over the last decade, America has dropped from fourth in the world in broadband all the way down to 22nd. We're having elections online, people are applying for jobs online, um, and they're asking people to apply for government services online. That means that there's a, a huge population of people who don't have access, who won't be able to, to engage in our, our society as a whole, but now they won't even be able to get jobs, so self-sufficiency is a big problem. And the divide of those without broadband access falls mostly along class, geography, and racial lines. 66 to 82 percent of Americans earning more than $50,000 have a broadband connection. But only half as many lower income households are connected. And the gap is growing for minority households as well. The Brookings Institution and MIT say that increasing broadband access can help put America back to work. Public interest, social interest, cultural interest, personal interest, all of these things drive the necessity of an and we need a government that can get us to a place where all of these interests are reflected in it. Here in the country that invented the internet, every child should have the chance to get online. And they'll get that chance when I'm present because that's how we'll strengthen America's competitiveness in the world. So that is the some video here. It tells you the problem called digital divide not only happened to those poor countries, but even in America. And so I gave you an example in Hong Kong. Uh, and actually, uh, in every society, we need to care about this problem. Because just like the problem of the wealthy and the poor, when the intellect age comes, we can easily see the digital divide uh, create another phenomenon for us to see the needs of those who really have to have access to the intellect age. Now, I would like to say I would like to stop here today, and I'm going to take attendance, so you have enough time to leave for your next class, okay? <coughs> Kenny is here. Sarah, thank you. Um, Chong, In Chong, thank you. Joanna, Joanna, thank you. Yosini. Thank you. Uh, Lafayette, yes. Shirley. I'm sorry, lady over there, I need to give you a time to do a presentation on Friday. Nicole, are you here? Nicole? Nicole, not here. Uh, Lena, okay. Uh, Vicky is here. Helen, thank you. Joanne, thank you. Uh, Winston, thank you. Greg is not here. Kevin, thank you. Ceci, Ceci, right, thank you. Wendy, thank you. Um, I need to say an apology to Kathy because I'm giving time to do the sharing on Friday.
Okay? Uh, now, next, next Monday. Next Monday, yes. So, thank you very much.
So that's it for today's CISG 1.4 Section 1 Web Technology Night on Thursday, February 27. Until next week, stay tuned.